Hi, ladies and gents. Hope you're doing great today. Welcome to your weekly news video. I'm trying today to stream this in HD. I've gone for 4K, but I might just drop it down to HD. So please let me know in the comments if everything's uh, running smoothly. I've upgraded my internet, so it should run perfectly. So we're going to go straight to the shared screen then first. And we're going to start with the biggest movement at the moment. So the, the craziest thing that I've seen so far. And that is, let's get this loaded up. Okay, so here we go. This is what came out, or should I say what didn't really come out. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, how whenever there's massive things that occur in the economy, we don't actually find out about them. So this was one of them that happened at the same time as some other news, which we won't uh, talk about. Um, and this is executing bail-in. Now, if you don't know what bail-in is, I did a video about it a while back. Let me just see where it is. Okay, this video here says your savings are at risk. It's got just under a quarter of a million views on this now. If you haven't watched that video yet, definitely watch that video because it's all about bail-in law, which came into effect. I think it was about 2009 when bail-in law came in. And this is effectively where a bank, so your bank can steal, and it is stealing, they don't call it that, your savings. So let's just take a quick look at this, which wasn't in the news or anything like that, um, but it came out on the 22nd of July. So this one's a couple of weeks ago, but I haven't covered it yet. Now let's read what they say about bail-in law. So they say bail-in is one of the stabilization tools available to a bank as resolution authority under the Bank uh, Banking Act 2009. So bail-in ensures, look at this word here, this is ironic, investors rather than public funds bear losses where a firm, so replace the word firm for bank, fails. And this isn't just in the UK, by the way. I know this is Bank of England. This exists in most of the uh, developed countries around the world now. Definitely check out that video I made. Now, let's just look at this first word. So it says investors. Well, firstly, it's not investors. It's members of the public. The reason they put the word investors here is because what actually happens when a bail-in takes place is that they basically swap the uh, shares in the bank for your money. So all the money that's in there, they swap it over for shares in the bank. So they create these shares or, or there may already be shares there. And then they become pretty much worthless at the time and they take your money. They do a swap. It says here rather than public funds. Well, the irony is it, it is public funds. Because no matter if they do it with your money in the bank account or they do it with public funds, as, they, as they're calling it, quote unquote, um, it makes no difference. It's still the citizen's money where a firm fails. So this is like Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns type, type situation. Now, the reason this is key at the moment, you might say, well, Neil, you talked about this before. Why is it so important right now? Is because they just sent out templates. Here they are. So these are template, here we go, template bail-in resolution. So this is for all the banks now that can actually use these templates and template for supplemental resolution instrument, template for onward transfer instrument. So a transfer instrument is actually an equity. So this is, you know, maybe the, it can be anything. Maybe it's the, the money in your bank account. Maybe it could be, um, you know, mortgages. It could be stocks and equities. It can be all sorts of things. Now, some people might say, well, so what? what? What's the relevance of this? Well, the relevance is, why would they do this right now? There's obviously a reason. You don't go, you just think of how much work the Bank of England have got on at the moment with everything going on. The amount that's going on there and with their staff in and things like that, they must be overwhelmed. Why would they take the time to work on bail-in paperwork and send that out? That's what I think is a little bit strange, a little bit unusual um, at the moment. Of course, today I was waiting for this to come out. This was the Monetary Policy Report press conference, again, the Bank of England. There was really no surprises. It's not worth an hour of your time to watch it. I would just watch it from, I don't know, about 20 minutes in, and that will tell you all the latest updates. But there really isn't anything in terms of tapering and interest rate changes or anything like that. Uh, Market Watch summarized it pretty well. And they really all you need to know is they think inflation will reach 
at the end of 2021, beginning of 2022. I think that is um, not true. I don't agree with it at all because what they're measuring with inflation isn't what is important to us as human beings, as citizens in all countries around the world. This doesn't just apply to England. It applies to wherever you are right now as well. The inflation rate, they're not including the most important things. You know, they're taking out, in some countries, they're taking out food, they're taking out housing, they're taking out cars. Well, what what else do you spend your money on if you're not, you know, spend your money on goods and services, food and, and housing and rent? So all of this that they're talking about really isn't accurate. But um, let's see what Market Watch was. Market Watch was mainly, you know, focusing on the pound and the value of the pound. Um, but I think the most important thing from all of this was the uh, inflation rate. And also they're, they're not looking to increase rates. However, you've got to watch the bond market. If the bond market really starts to shift, then I think we're going to see um, the you know interest rates may may change. But I don't in terms of the um, the bond purchases, in terms of QE, things like that, they want to taper, but I'm not so sure if they're willing to do it. I don't think they're going to start raising interest rates 1%, 2%, etc. I think it's more likely what we're going to see is they're going to try and copy what they did after the 08 crisis. And they're probably going to try and do this, you know, 15 basis points, 0.15% interest rate rise, maybe a a 25 basis point, so 0.25% rise. I think that's most likely, but if you see unemployment not recovering, they're not going to do it. They're just going to rely on QE, which is very, very dangerous because what's QE doing at the moment is causing all of this inflation. So let's look at the FTSE. There isn't really uh, FTSE 100. That's the UK. It didn't really um, do much at all. There was no impact, I would say, on the FTSE today from the news as expected. So let's look at the next news then. So Treasury Department, this was interesting, to invoke extraordinary measures as Congress misses debt ceiling deadline. So this uh, is pretty outrageous. I mean, the debt ceiling, I think, is $22 trillion for the US anyway. And they're talking about raising it. Yeah, here we go. $22 trillion. And they're talking about raising it to 28 or above $28.5 trillion. This is pretty dangerous, ladies and gents, in terms of how they're just letting the debt run away. There's a reason you have caps in the debt level. Um, and yes, you can link it to GDP and some other things, but... One thing to be aware of, even though they're talking about GDP and how GDP is fine, actually GDP isn't fine. The GDP they've created is as a result of stimulus and injecting lots more liquidity into the financial markets and into the economy. That's not real GDP. That's that's created out of thin air, which is causing inflation. The next piece of finance news then is household debt. Uh, this came out this week. Uh, climbs to 14.64 trillion due to the jump in mortgages and car loans. Now, this is worrying for the, for the US economy to have this um, sheer level of household debt. A lot of it, I think, will be, uh, as I mentioned, mortgages and things like that. But one thing that is interesting is the reason that the government gave out so much stimulus in the US was because they wanted to cause inflation. They wanted to increase the velocity of money. But did that happen? Yes, it did. But also, what did a lot of people do? They took, I'm not sure if it covers it in this article, um, credit credit cards. I'm sure it does. But they actually took their some of the stimulus and they used it to pay off their credit cards, which um, is not good. That's not what the government wants. It's not what the Federal Reserve wants. Because when you take um, this stimulus and use it to pay off credit card debt, it actually destroys credit. And when you destroy credit, this is not good for what they want. They don't want credit destroyed. They want as much credit as possible until it eventually reaches the peak where you just can't pay the debt, um, the interest payments on that credit anymore. But this is another thing that's taken place. So people have actually started to pay down their credit card debt, but they've ramped up their homes and their car debt. Very interesting. Moving back to the UK slightly then, UK economic rebound slowing as inflation pressure grows. This is really no surprise to me. It shouldn't be a surprise to any of you as well. Obviously, this is going to slow. When you've got no GDP and you've got a pandemic going on, right, what happens? 
manufacturing stops or it slows down, they're not going to continue at the same pace as they were before with everything locked down. So what do you have to do? You have to inject new liquidity into the marketplace. You inject new liquidity and that helps to push the uh, GDP and the economy back up. But since they've stopped, uh, started to actually slow that down, they're not putting in as much liquidity now. Obviously, this is going to make it make it slow down. Now, what else will make the UK economy slow down? The furlough ending, not uh, it's only a couple of months away now. It's actually started to reduce in the summertime. When the furlough ends, you're going to see massive reductions as well and an increase in unemployment, stopping the government from being able to raise interest rates. Next article then. This is, uh, here we go. This, this just shows you where the focus is right now. McDonald's earnings beat driven by new chicken sandwich and promotion with K-pop band BTS. Uh, I would remove the T from that. And I would say that this is BS. A chicken sandwich is not going to, and a K-pop band, um, you know, promotion is not going to do all of this. Here's what I think is actually going on here. I'm not even going to play the article, uh, the video and go through the article because it's nonsense. This is, you know, just use logic and common sense here. What actually happened? All the small businesses were forced closed throughout the world. All your small restaurants, small cafes, takeaways were forced to close. What was allowed to stay open was your fast food restaurants and they do takeaway and delivery and things like that. So all that's happened is the business from the mom and pop business, the small businesses, and the ones that went bankrupt because they didn't get all the funding that you know some of the big chains did, all of that business has just gone to McDonald's and some of these other places. One of the reasons I don't eat at, at fast food restaurants like this, I, just, I think it's just a scandal that they have this uh, level of, um, I don't even know what, what, what word I'm looking for here, but they have this these benefits that a lot of the smaller businesses, a lot of the smaller cafes and restaurants don't have. It's an absolute scandal, actually. Nothing to do with a, a chicken sandwich and a, a promotion. Okay, moving on to media then. Sky News Australia was banned last week by YouTube. So I just went on to their uh, channel. I was wondering what this was about. So I, it was. they said it was all about COVID misinformation. Sky News put out their statement, said it was nothing to do with that and you know, whatever else. Personally, I don't watch Sky News Australia myself, but um, I've just been on today and I can see that here was a week ago when their last post was. And then seven hours ago, they've just gone crazy. They've just ramped up the uh, the video outputs. So that was an interesting one. Sky News, so that's a mainstream media outlet, which is right leaning, uh, was actually banned for putting out stories. Very interesting. A lot of it as well, I think, because I've seen some other news channels that have been banned. I don't know if it's a case of putting out misinformation. What it what it often is, is what I see some guests come on to these channels and they're very outspoken. And, you know, sometimes I agree with what they say. Sometimes I don't agree. I think they're pushing certain certain points too far. And a lot of it is uh, more arbitrary than than factual. But I think that's maybe a case of what might have happened. Maybe it was an interview. Maybe it was something like that, where someone just said some stuff that was a, a bit over the line, uh, causing a ban. <clears throat> now, you remember we talked about France last week and uh, the strikes and things. Well, yet again, we're seeing uh, even more strikes planned over the vaccine laws. France does have quite strict vaccine uh, COVID-19 laws at the moment. Um, there's a, it's definitely something you should look into. It's way too much to cover on this stream, but there's a lot going on here, and there is a lot of protesting. Um, you saw what what I what I showed last week with all the the rioting and you know so many people. I don't even know how many people that there, there were thousands, tens of thousands. Some people say there was a hundred thousand people on the streets. Um, the French are very different to the British and some other nations. They are not to be trifled with. They will revolt and they will, um, you know, start tearing things down if if they feel their civil liberties are at, are at stake. Again, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, OK, let's move on to this story then. This was pretty crazy. This is Czechoslovakia. OK, just to put this into context, there was a tornado in Czechoslovakia. I mean, this is... I've never heard anything like this before. Yes, in, in certain places in, in the USA, 
this is normal. But in in Europe, a tornado of this scale. Well, rescuers have been searching through rubble in the Czech Republic after a tornado left a trail of destruction through the country's southeast. At least three people were killed and dozens injured when the storm tore through several towns and villages. Neighboring Austria and Slovakia have sent crews to join the rescue effort. The storm knocked out power to thousands of households. Now, tornadoes are I mean, look a at rare this. occurrence in the Look region. at this devastation. Nope. ...movie what they've seen in that area. Sophomore 100 teams of rescue workers are searching through the rubble of buildings and through damaged buildings looking for survivors. They're so there we go. We have a little bit more weather related news. I'm not going to talk too much about the, the weather today. One of the article on Turkey. So you remember the wildfires that we talked about? The wildfires now are ripping through Turkey and now it has breached the power plant. This was the critical infrastructure piece in Turkey. They were most worried about it has breached the power plant now. So quite, uh, quite worrying. Um, Turkey, you know, feel for those people, pray for those people. Afghanistan. So, again, why, why did, you know, all the troops pull out so quickly from Afghanistan? I understand with Iraq and places like that where it was a lot stronger and the, the, the military presence there was a lot better situated. But in terms of the Afghanistan, now the Taliban is looking to take over. They're taking massive sways of ground straight away. A lot of younger people as well are worried that they're going to um, well, we, we won't say what's going to happen, but they're worried what's going to happen when, when the Taliban actually catch up with them after, you know, they've sided with um, a number of Western powers and, and everything else and villagers. So this is another worrying story coming out of Afghanistan with the sheer speed that the Taliban now are taking over land. And it is sad for people like myself who served in Afghanistan to see this. You know, you sort of feel like, what was the point? What was it all for? And, you know, friends of mine that were killed as well, when now everyone just pulls out and just gives it all back. It's a bit like, what what was it all for? What a waste of what a waste of human life in some ways. Uh, next, uh, Twitter story. Let's load this one up. So this is from RT News. Facebook's independent fact checker may not be so independent after all. A US congressman has questioned the impartiality of factcheck.org which is supposed to tackle vaccine disinformation because it's indirectly funded by jab manufacturer johnson and johnson so that was the um main piece of news that a lot of people sent me this week and that was uh, johnson and johnson is actually apparently funding uh, the fact checkers on facebook for vaccine misinformation so regardless of what you think about the vaccine whether you're pro or against one thing that you have to accept is that whenever you have these sort of um, fact checkers, they have to be impartial and they have to have no bias. The funding you know, can't come from someone like Johnson & Johnson, who it's their job to actually get vaccines into people's arms. So why would you have fact checkers from there? There's obviously bias there. So that's um, a bizarre story that I saw this week. Next, this one's got a lot of controversy going on because a number of restaurants banned um, unvaccinated. Now this guy's done the opposite. Huntington Beach, California is actually banning patrons who have been vaccinated. Yup, the sign says proof of being unvaccinated required. And just look at the lines to get in. Our Lisa Guerrero spoke to owner Tony Roman, who Wednesday was called an idiot by Chris Cuomo live on C. So let me know your thoughts on a lot of this news story so far. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. And then lastly, last story then, and I'll look at a couple of questions. This is um, Sydney. Again, I, I really feel for the people in Australia. I know I've got a lot of subscribers in Australia. Yet again, there is another lockdown throughout Australia. So again, throughout different different areas. So Sydney, Victoria state to enter another seven day lockdown. And the biggest worry, actually, let's go back to the to the main here. I think that the biggest worry for for me is not necessarily the, the pandemic itself. But if Australia does go into another lockdown like this, a very, very strict lockdown, I think probably what we're going to see is not is not very positive, you know, the economy is going to suffer. Already you've got high unemployment. I think you've got job seeker or job keeper 
in Australia. I think that's one of your your programs. But already, you know, this is not this is not going to do well for the economy. If you go into another lockdown, industry is going to have to grind to a halt. Orders are going to have to grind. Exports will have to slow down. I don't know how the imports are going to work and the infrastructure, uh, logistical chains, all of this sort of thing. It is quite worrying. I'm I'm you know I'm sorry to to actually see this under the lockdown. Um, you know, I've looked at the science behind the lockdowns as well, and I don't 100% agree with with the lockdowns. I just, um, I mean, even in the UK, they've said no more lockdowns. Whether or not that's true is another matter. I think we'll see come winter time if there are any more lockdowns. So let me see if I've got any questions coming in on the comments then. Okay, any questions, any questions? Interesting, whenever I'm doing my uh, live streams, it's mainly a lot of comments, a lot of comments coming in. Um, so, so if there aren't any questions, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, end it there. Any questions on today's news? Any questions at all? I'm going to end the stream in a moment. All right, good. Well, are small businesses affected by evictions? Okay, interesting. So it depends on the country, actually, in terms of evictions right now. So a lot of businesses um, have... Hold on for bail-ins, bail-ins start. Okay, I'm seeing all the questions coming in now. How long before bail-ins start? <laughs> okay. Chance of a US bail-in. Okay, what's going on with the banks? Yeah, so I think actually that's a, that's a really good question. Let's cover the bail-in question then. So my biggest concern, I, I think, with the bail-ins is A, they're going to take people's money this time because of the outcry that occurred last time. I just don't think they're going to do bailouts again. The bottom line is it doesn't make any difference whether it is a bail-in or a bailout. It's the taxpayer that loses. The only difference is it's, it's across the board with taxpayers, whereas bail-ins affects the middle class and people who have saved their money for a long time. But remember, inflation is the tax. You know, a lot of people say, well, they're not doing taxation, they're not doing this, they're not doing that. No, they are. You just can't see it. It's a stealth tax. So they, they can't tax people. This is the thing. Imagine if they put, like, my tax rate, which is 45%. That's just my personal tax rate. It doesn't include national insurance and corporation tax and everything else. 45% is my basic uh, tax rate, right? So imagine if they said, right, Neil, we're going to put you up to 60% plus all your other taxes that you have to pay. I would just say there's no point in me even working, right? Even with my income, there's no point working at all because why would I work for, say, 10 or 15% to keep it? So the government know they can't do this. So what do they do instead is they create a program of quantitative easing. So it's government bonds and things like that. They, you know, in the US, the Federal Reserve is buying all the mortgages, et cetera. So this is what they do. Now, when you create all the new currency and you put it into the economy, it actually expands the currency supply. But what we've seen is a, a shrinking of GDP, even though they've included the stimulus into the GDP. You see, here's the trick. So you're seeing all this, this inflation going on. And that's the thing. The inflation is the tax. They don't talk about this. The inflation is the tax. Instead of taxing you personally, they do the inflation. So how does this link in then with the bail-ins? Well, I think next time what they're going to do is they're just simply going to bail in savers' money. And it'll be as simple as that. And they'll give you worthless bank stock. The bank will keep going and it will try and recover in the future. But you're going to be sat with bank stock, which you don't want. I think that's really how it will um, play out. Thought you did eat fast food, according to Lynette Yang's video. Yeah, Lynn, I, uh, I kicked the fast food habit. Look, you can see looking nice and trim now. No more McDonald's and stuff for me. Okay. What will happen to mortgages? In fact, I can click on these and load them up. Um, so what, what will happen to mortgages? Under bail-in law, well, it's a case of really what you want to worry about. I don't think a lot will happen with mortgages. Look what happened the last time. Always use the previous recessions as templates. I had a mortgage on my house in the last recession. Now, this mortgage is divided into six accounts now, which is really frustrating for me. 
right? Because I can't even see, see if I pay off my mortgage on this house that I have right now, which I think is about 35,000 pounds, something like that left on my mortgage. I can't just pay it off because I pay this massive penalty, right? But when I actually got this mortgage back in, I think it was 2007, something like that, when I, when I first, first bought my house, we went into the crisis. So I bought just before the crisis, typical. That's how I know so much about you know this now. I don't want to get caught out again. And my mortgage company went bankrupt. So it was sold to another mortgage company. It was sold to another mortgage company. It went to another mortgage company. And what I ended up with was all these sub accounts throughout, throughout all the, the mortgages. And this is really what happens. So I think all that will happen if, if all the mortgages have an issue in the future is they'll just get bought out by other conglomerates and it just they keep buying, buying, buying and accumulating. I think that's what's most likely to happen. Now, there's other theories and these are more extreme theories. And that is around the, the plans that certain organizations want to do where you don't own anything. They want to move everything into government hands. So more of a, a socialist sort of economy that wants to be created. I'm completely against that. It does not work. It's been tried over and over again. I've got a dozen books here I could open and, and show you evidence of right now. It's been tried over and over again. It doesn't work to put everything into the hands of the government. If it did, then you wouldn't see you know Cuba and all these other examples right now. Okay, let's see if there's anything else. Okay, good, good. I think what we'll do, we'll save a lot of the questions for the live stream on Sunday, actually. Um, so, yeah, I think we'll do that. All right, good. Thanks for being online. I'll see you all on Sunday for the monthly finance and economics live stream. That's the big one. Uh, you still got time to get your questions in over Patreon for those members. If you haven't already put your question in, just look at the post and you'll see it. Oh, there's a fly in my house. <laughs> all right. Um, so see you all on Sunday. I'll try and get another video out if I can this week as well. All right. Take care, guys, and God bless.